Dialogue can be a great way to add character to a game and introduce humor. In this video, we'll have a look at how to create a simple dialogue system from scratch and we'll design it in such a way that you can easily expand upon it to suit your needs. Also, on a completely unrelated note, Sophia and I were on a podcast. It's called Game Dev Unchained. It's super cool. Go check it out if you want to learn more about the making of brekkies and the game industry in general. There's a link in the description. Also, thanks to Hans Hoftoon for his support on Patreon. All right, let's get started. So here's the scene we're going to be working with. I have a canvas with a dialogue box. This is just a simple image. And under here, I have two text objects, one for the NPC's name, one for the dialogue, and then I have a continue button. This is all made from the standard UI tools. The only thing I'm using is a custom font. There will be a link to where you can download that in the description. Also in the background here, I have some sprites from the 2D Mega Pack. I'll have a link for that as well. Now above our dialog box, I have a button. This is just here for testing purposes and will allow us to trigger a new conversation. To begin our dialog system, let's right click in the project panel, go create and choose C Sharp script. And let's call this our dialog manager. We can also create an empty object in the hierarchy, reset the transform, call this one dialog manager as well, and drag our script onto that. Let's then drag our object to the top so we can always see it. If we now double click our script to open it up in Visual Studio, we can go ahead and delete our update method. And right above our start method, we want to add a very central variable. We want to add the variable that will keep track of all of the sentences in our current dialogue. So right off the bat, you might think, well, let's go and create a public string array. Remember, an array is basically just a list of objects. And so this here could be a list of text elements. And we could then call it something like sentences and close that off. And we could definitely do this using an array. But there's actually a data type that is much more fitting for what we want to do. This data type is called a queue. In order to use a queue, make sure that you're using the system.collections namespace. A queue works in many ways like a list, except it's a bit more restricted. It's what we call a FIFO collection. FIFO stands for first in, first out. So when we go ahead and load a new dialog, we'll put all of the sentences that we want to display into this queue. And then as the user reads through the dialog, we'll simply load new sentences from the end of the queue. Now it's good practice here to define a type for our queue and that's going to be of type string. So we'll make a queue of strings. And in our start method here, we'll just go ahead and initialize it. So let's set sentences equal to a new queue of type string. And we actually don't need this variable to be public. Let's make it private instead. So now that we have our queue of sentences, let's go ahead and define another object. Let's right click in the project panel, go create C sharp script, and let's call this object dialog. Now, basically we are going to be using this dialog class as an object that we can pass into the dialog manager whenever we want to start a new dialog. And so this class will host all information that we need about a single dialog. That also means that we don't need this to derive from mono behavior because we don't want it to sit on a script. And we can also go ahead and delete our two methods. Instead, we want to create a public string array, which is going to be the sentences that we will load into our queue. So we'll call this one sentences. And we can also maybe put a name of the NPC that we're talking with. So let's create a public string called name. Now remember, whenever we create a class like this and want it to show up in the inspector so that we can edit it, we need to mark it as serializable. To do that, we go to the top of our class and add an attribute called system.serializable. Now we can save this. And if we then go into Unity, not much should happen because we've only created this object, but we haven't really implemented it anywhere. And so we can't physically edit these properties. So let's go ahead and create a third c -sharp script. And this is going to be our dialogue trigger. We would also call this NPC or interactable or even story element. But I'll just stick to the generic name. Now this script is going to sit on an object and will allow us to trigger a new dialogue. So for the purpose of this video, let's put it on the test button. Let's drag in our dialogue trigger and let's open it up. Let's delete the two methods and let's create a public. And now instead of using a normal data type, we'll be using the one that we just created, the dialogue class. And we'll just call it dialogue with a non capital D. Now, when we save this and hit into Unity, voila! We now have a dialogue variable where we can put in a name. I'm gonna put in Dwayne Johnson. And we can also add as many sentences as we would like. I'm gonna add three here. And now we have three text fields. However, we could easily make these text fields a bit nicer. I don't feel there's enough space here to add long sentences. To make this nicer, we'll go into the dialogue class. And right above the sentences variable, we'll add another attribute. 
This one is going to be the text area. And inside some parentheses, we'll specify two variables. The first one being the minimum amount of lines the text area will use. And the second one being the maximum. If we now save that and navigate back into Unity, we can see three nice text area boxes that we can use. So I'm just going to fill in a quick conversation. Now here I'm just pretending to be a single NPC. If we wanted we could put as many dialogue triggers in our game as we wanted to. We could simply go and create another empty object. We could call this one Linda, put a dialogue trigger on her, give her a name and some sentences to speak. And so this makes it really easy to populate your game with different pieces of dialogue. Let's just delete Linda for now and stick to our test button. Now of course we currently only have this variable. We also need some way to feed this to our dialogue manager. To do that, let's open up our dialogue trigger. Let's create a public method of type void. Let's call it trigger dialogue. And in here, we simply want to locate our dialogue manager. The best way to do this would be using a singleton pattern, but I don't want to get into explaining those in this video. I'll have a link in the description if you want to learn about them. We'll just be using find object of type. The type of object we want to find is the dialogue manager. And now that we've found this object, we can go ahead and call a function on it. And we haven't made this function yet, but let's just call it something like start dialogue. We can then give it a function argument to tell it what conversation to start. And we can simply pass in our dialogue variable. Now, if we save this and go into our dialogue manager, we can go ahead and add this method. So let's create a public void called start dialogue. Let's have it take in a dialogue object. And let's just call that dialogue as well. And then inside of the method, we can go ahead and write debug.log starting conversation with and then add dialogue.name. Then after this, of course, we want to go ahead and load in all of our sentences. We want to update the UI and everything like that. But now we should actually see that if we call trigger dialogue on the dialogue trigger script, it's going to start a conversation. Of course, there's a million different ways to trigger dialogue. You could call the function when a player gets inside of a certain radius. You could call it when he discovers an object. Maybe when he starts the game or loses it. Or in our case, we'll just call it when he presses start conversation. So let's go to the button here. Let's add an onclick event. Let's drag in our dialogue trigger. Let's go under the dialogue trigger and find the trigger dialogue function. Now when we hit play, hit start conversation. It says starting conversation with Dwayne Johnson. Awesome. So now our two scripts are communicating, but we still need to load in all of our sentences. To do that, we first want to clear any sentences that were there from a previous conversation. To do that, we call clear on the sentences queue. We then go through all of the strings in our dialogue.sentences array. So let's write for each string and we'll call each sentence sentence. In dialogue.sentences, we want to queue up a sentence. So let's go sentences.nq and we'll just put in the sentence that we're currently looking at. So after looping through all of the sentences in our dialogue and adding them to our queue, well then we want to display the first one. So let's make some kind of method called display next sentence. We'll also make this a public method so that we can call it from our continue button. Let's call it display next sentence. And first we want to check if there even is more sentences in the queue. So we'll go if sentences.count is equal to zero. If this is true, we have reached the end of our queue and we can go ahead and end our dialogue. Let's create a method called end dialogue. And let's also just return out of the rest of the function. Let's quickly create our end dialogue function. And for now, we can just put debug.log end of conversation. However, in the case that we still have sentences left to say, well, then we want to get the next sentence in the queue by going sentences.dq. And we can store this in a string variable called sentence. And for now, let's just debug.log that sentence. So when we save this, head into Unity, hit play, and then hit start conversation. We can see it says starting conversation with Dwayne. And then the first sentence is loaded. Hey there, my name is Dwayne. And then of course we need to be able to skip to the next line. We want to do that using the continue button, but we first need to hook that up. Let's go under our dialog box. Let's find the continue button. Let's add an onclick event. Let's drag in our dialog manager. Let's call the dialog manager display next sentence function. And now when we hit play, start the conversation and hit continue, we can see that it shows the next line. I'm here to guide you through your dangerous adventures and wake you up in the morning, of course. 
and when we continue past all of our sentences, it says end of conversation. So now we have a fully working dialogue system. All that's left is updating the UI to show it. And this is the easiest part. We simply need a few references to UI elements. So let's go up here and say using Unity Engine dot UI. We then create two public text variables. The first one is going to be our name text. And the second one is going to be our dialogue text. Then when we display the next sentence, instead of showing it in the console, we'll go dialogue text dot text equals the sentence. And right when we start the dialogue, we can set the name. So let's go name text dot text equals dialogue dot name. And we can get rid of the debug dot log now. Let's save that, go into our dialogue manager, drag in the name text and the dialogue text, hit play, start a conversation and voila, our text objects appropriately update. But we still need our dialogue manager to animate in and out. To do that, let's use a simple animator. Let's select our dialogue box. Let's go to the animation tab or go window animation. Let's hit create. We want to add an animation called dialogue box and we'll create two states, one for when it's open and one for when it's closed. Let's begin by creating the open state. We want to make sure to hit record and let's insert a keyframe on the Y here. So I'll just copy the current value, move it slightly and paste the value back in. And now you can see it's red here and it's added a keyframe. We can then create another clip. This one is going to be the dialog box close. Let's save that. Here we also want to make sure to hit record and now we want to move it below the screen. So let's click and drag while holding down shift to only move it on one axis. And there we go, now it's out of sight. So now we can stop recording. We can go into our animator. This is window animator. And you can see in here that we have two states, the dialog box open and the dialog box close. First off, we want to make the close state the default state. So let's right click and go set as layer default state. We can then go up here and make sure that we are under the parameters tab. We can add a new parameter. Let's make it of type bool and let's call it is open. This value is going to determine whether or not our dialog box is currently open. We then right click on our close state, hit make transition, click on our open state and let's also make one the other way. On our transition from close to open, let's make sure to add a condition. This will make sure that we will only transition to open if the is open parameter is true. And we also want to make sure to disable has exit time so we won't wait for the current animation to play out before transitioning. On the way back, we can do the same thing. Still, we don't want it to have exit time and the condition will be is open, but this time we want it to be false. Now, in order to control this animation, we need a reference to the animator component that is automatically created on our dialog box. So let's go inside of our dialog manager. Let's go to the top and add a public animator. Let's call it animator. Then when we start the dialogue, we can go here to the very top and say animator dot set bool. The bool that we want to set is the is open parameter and we want to set it to true because we're starting a new dialogue. Let's copy this same piece of code and paste it in the end dialogue function. And this time, of course, we want to set it to false. Now, when we save this and go to our dialogue manager, we now have a slot for the animator. Now this sits on my dialog box object, so I'll just drag that in there. Let's hit play. And you can see by default, our dialog box pops out of the way. When we then start a conversation, it eases onto the screen. And if we go through and end it, it slides back down. Finally, to add the last bit of polish, we can have the letters in our sentences animate one by one onto the screen. To do that, let's go inside of our script. And instead of just updating the dialog text directly, let's create a coroutine that will do this for us. Let's write I enumerator. We'll call this type sentence and we'll give it a string with the sentence to type. First off, we want to set our dialog text dot text equal to an empty string. Then we want to loop through all of the individual characters in our sentence. To do that, we use a for each and we want to loop through each character, which we'll call the letter in sentence dot to char array. To char array is a handy function that will convert a string into a character array. And so here we're just looping through each character and the character that we're currently looking at is called letter. So now we can simply add our letter onto the dialog text one by one. Let's go dialog text dot text and write plus equals letter. 
This will append our letter to the end of the string. And after each letter, we'll wait a small amount of time. I'm just going to wait a single frame. So let's write yield, return, null. All that's left is to call this coroutine. We'll do that up here. To call it, we'll write start coroutine. The coroutine that we want to start is type sentence. And we want to make sure to pass in the sentence to type. Also, there is the possibility that the user will start a new sentence before the previous one has finished animating. In that case, we want to make sure that it stops animating before we start animating the new one. To do that, we'll call the stop all coroutines function. This makes sure that if type sentence is already running, it will stop doing so and then we can start a new one. So let's now save this and let's hit play inside of Unity. Now we start a conversation and voila, the letters are animating onto the screen. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. And make sure to check out Game Dev Unchained. Also, we've been more active on Twitter lately, so make sure to follow us at Bracky's Tweet. On that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in June, and a special thanks to Hans Hoftun, Jesper Mikkelsen, Will Goat, Thomas Worley, Stone Gamer, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latido, Derek Heemskirk, and Faisal Marify. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash